Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm taking a look at a cooperative card game called Outpost Amazon. Outpost Amazon is a follow-up to a game called Outpost Siberia that I reviewed some time ago and gave a negative review to. It was a game that was seemed to be sloppily handled. Some of the character powers did not make any sense. The game was uh, extremely difficult. It did not seem well put together. And in fact, the company then went out and put a, out a, uh, you know, a guide to uh, help players play better. The, which really was a, a thinly veiled, you know, rules update. It was basically a, a patch that they sold as a, oh, you keep losing? Well, try these to help you out. I wasn't super thrilled about the way they handled that, as opposed to just be up front and say, here's rulebook version 2.0. But in this new version, those changes have been implemented, as well as a few others that are simply new to this release just new rules in general. So let's take a look at this one. I'll give you a brief overview of how it all works. Come on back and I'll tell you what I think of this game of Outpost Amazon. Here we go. To set up the game, we are going to customize this deck of cards here, depending on the difficulty the players want. This is going to be the deck that the players have to play through, the encounters, the bad things that they have to play through in order to win the game. Some of the cards that don't make it into this deck become the player deck, which is this one over here, simply turned upside down, because these cards have two sides, a bad side and a good side. And then everybody has a character with a life tracker, one special ability there, and they all begin with one card. So this card, for example, is either one event in the, on this side of the card here, or when it's flipped over and in the player's decks, then it's this little strip right here, which is going to have a strength and an item. And so to begin the game, we are going to pick a star player. We're going to start over here with this character, Jamie Ryder, and you are going to play through a few different phases on your turn. But basically what you do is you draw three cards from the deck, uh, not that deck, that's the baddies, three cards from this deck. You are going to look at those three cards. One of them is going to become new equipment. So I'll put that uh, just here on the table as part of the equipment that's available to the players. One is added to my hand. The other is discarded. And then I am going to be allowed to uh, play these cards from my hand in order to attack monsters, as well as use any equipment that has been gathered on the table. Once that's done, and I am done, there's no baddies right now, then I draw one card from this deck here, and I deal with that. So I'm going to flip it over. It's going to either be a bad event, a positive event, or a creature. In this case, it's this creature here. Each creature is going to have a few different values at the top. The first one is how much damage it does. The second, how much health it has. And the third, how much you uh, have to get it down to in order to net this creature and put it in a cage, which is how you score victory points at the end of the game. As soon as something shows up, I have to, as the active player, assign its damage to a player that has not taken a turn yet. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to this player here, who takes one hit. And then that I'm done, I will go ahead and turn my card sideways, and I am finished. The player that took the hit is the next active player, and they begin with drawing three cards themselves. So they've got over here, they have a torch. Uh, and this is uh, their choice as to what they would put into the equipment uh, uh, supply, all right? So they've got a torch that says they can choose a threat in play and ignore the effect of that threat. They've got another card that says two wreckage. You use wreckage to add new cages to play. And uh, there are there's a pile of cages here that you can pay wreckage for to bring them into play because they will start to get filled up with the, the creatures. They have a specific capacity that is tied to these creatures' sizes. And then I also have a net that lets me capture a threat, put it in a, in a cage, when it has been uh, successfully weakened enough to be netted. So I'll go ahead and put the uh, torch into play. And I'm going to keep this card in my hand. And while it's in my hand, it is no longer a net. It's simply a hit of strength two. So now that player is going to go ahead and play some of these cards. So I could say, play this one, on this creature here, that's two hits on it. I've weakened it a little bit. 
and I could now play, let's say, I could play this one as well on the same creature. It's now taken four hits. So if, I, if we had a net, I could now net this creature. However, we don't have one in the supply. And uh, that character is almost done. They just have to reveal a new bad card. And there it is. They are going to now pick someone to uh, have attacked by this character. Someone that has not taken a turn, so not this player here. And so let's say they give it to this player here. They are done with their turn. They turn their card sideways, and this player will take their turn. Once everyone has taken a turn, some of the monsters are going to have effects that come into play. Some of them also have effects that are happening while they are in play. So for example, uh, this one here says that while in play, the current player must pay one food or one water or lose one HP. And uh, there's a few others that say things like... Uh, this one here says, uh, while in play, this threat can only be captured in a cage that has a minimum capacity of 13. So that's important when you want to capture this one. You'll have some that say, uh, let's see, this is the same power. Let's find a couple of different ones. The ones I'm skipping over, by the way, are events. I'll show you those in one second. This one says, end of round. So I think once everyone has taken a turn. Uh, choose one additional character to lose one HP, one hit point. And so that's when that would work. And then the events are, when you flip them over, you're going to have to be forced to, you're going to be forced to pay something, food or water, something like that. And then something happens. If you cannot make that thing happen, someone is going to take one hit to their HP because you cannot fulfill the card. Now, one interesting thing that I want to mention, this is again a very brief sort of overview of the game, is that when you do defeat something, so let's say the next player here is going to draw their own cards, they'll add one to the supply and so on, they will um, they'll go ahead and put that there, discard this one, keep this card in their hand, they're going to attack this and do enough damage to not net it, just kill it, which you can do. Your score might suffer because of it, because you're not caging things to, to study them, you are just taking it out. However, when you do that, this card that you were fighting becomes a player card. So we're going to flip it over, and we are going to discard it and everything else that attacked it into the player discard pile over here, which means once we cycle this deck and reshuffle it, you'll see this card show up, but you'll only be taking into consideration the player power, the part of the card that works for the players themselves. And uh, so you can modify the deck while you are playing. And also the equipment, which you can use on your turn, allows you to do a few different things, as I said. Uh, for example, first uh, aid kit here allows you to pick a player and they recover their full starting HP. This all continues until you've run this deck out, hopefully. And if you can eliminate everything, you will win the game. If one player loses all of their life points, then the players are going to lose the game collectively. At the end of the game, once you are finished and win, you will score points for everything you have captured, and you can compare that total score to other games you've played, see how well you're doing, and uh, it allows you to sort of you know, get a feeling of not just success or failure, but how much success, success by how many points. And that's basically it. So uh, the players, as I said, have a unique power on them. I'll just show you a couple here. This one, for example, says once per game, search the discard pile and recover one piece of wreckage on your turn. That's just one time in the entire game. This one has a once per round power that says when playing event requirements, use water as food or food as water. So that gives you some flexibility. This one over here, once per game, uh, capture a net value two threat without a net or a cage. So that will let you uh, capture something without needing to worry about those requirements that normally need to be taken into consideration. And so, again, the players are going to be taking rounds, uh, being forced to hit each other with the new threats as they show up. The last player to take a turn in the in the round, by the way, once everyone has uh, is exhausted and has taken a turn, when this player here reveals a threat, if it's a monster, such as this one here, they can give, since no one is ready, everyone has gone, they can give the hit to anyone they want to, that's already taken a turn. So that will balance itself out. And that's pretty much it. Again, just a very uh, superficial look at how everything works together. But let's go back up top and let me tell you what I think of it, how I think it feels while you are playing, and if it's an interesting and worthwhile experience.
All right, so let's kick it off with thematic ties. Is the theme original? Is it well implemented? I think so. I like this theme a lot, just like I liked the theme in the first one. This idea of you and a group of explorers or scientists or what have you being stranded somewhere in a remote location, having to fight your way out through mutations. Something has gone awry. In the original one, as I said, it was a Siberian uh, setting. In this one, you have the Amazonian jungle here, and everything you are encountering, all these all these monsters and creatures, it's, it's very thematic, it's engaging, it's harrowing. I like the theme. The aesthetics of the game, component quality, congruent artwork, things like that. I think the artwork is excellent, just as it was in the first release. I think the component quality itself is fine, it works well. But I still had issues with several of the cards having unclear rules. Some of the uh, text is sloppily handled. Some of the powers seem to be end of round powers, but are labeled as in play while in play powers. It's just, again, uh, not a ton of care or, you know, not, not enough care, let's say, went into tackling those little issues that seem to crop up along the way. Next up, replayability. Does the game scale well? Are there new things to discover as you are playing from one game to the next? I would say it scales okay. Certainly better than the first game, which was just, you know, you, you needed a lot of players. It was it was not really an out of the box. Anyway, it did not really work. Um, this one, you know, it scales a little bit better than that. But the... Um, and I do like the idea of the new cages, the, the idea of there being a scoring system. The first one was a, a pass-fail sort of endeavor. You won or you lost. That was it. So in this one, if you do win, you do have a score to compare to your previous scores, see how well you did. Sometimes you cannot uh, afford that luxury, so you have to kill something outright. It also lets you grow your deck, of course, of playing cards. I like that decision to be, uh, you know, I find it to be interesting. I, I like I like that decision uh, tree. So the replayability here, I, th I certainly think, is better than the, in the first game. But I still would not say it's fantastic. It's, it's all right. You are seeing the same cards every game. Uh, you will go through basically every card every game. It's just a small deck of cards. And it's, it's okay, that replayability, but not incredible. You will soon have seen everything, have sort of made every decision there is to be made. Uh, the game length, is it interesting the whole time? Does it, does it become repetitive, anything like that? I think it's fine. The box lists 30 minutes. I would say that's about right. Maybe a little bit longer than that. But um, it stays engaging. The tension rises as you start getting closer to, to running out the deck. I did not mention in the overview, one way you lose as well is if there are enough revealed threats out there that stay face up, uh, then you are going to lose the game as well. So you you must peck away at them, and you have to choose which one you get rid of. Some of them are massive creatures that don't have a stay-in-play effect. So maybe you can safely ignore that, because it would take so much of your effort to eliminate that thing, and just choose the other ones that are going to actually actively affect the players at the table. But if you allow too many of them that are passive creatures to simply sit there, well, you can be overwhelmed. You can, you can quickly be overrun. So that's neat, and I, I like that. Uh, it, it, that that Those decisions carry the game through 30, 40 minutes just fine. So I think the game length is good. The ease of play. Is it fiddly? Are there any extraneous rules? Is it easy to teach? The game is a little bit on the quirky side as far as the uh, multiple-use cards. It always takes a few explanations for folks to understand that, hey, if the card is in your hand, you need to ignore literally everything on the card except the number in the corner. Uh, you know, you'll often have players who look at the card and think, oh, it's a water card. Well, not if, it, not if it's in your hand, it's not. It's nothing. It's a two. It's a two hit. If it's on the table, in our supply area, it's water. And not a hit, just water or whatever it may be. So it's a little tricky to teach, yeah, and it takes a little getting used to. But it's not too bad. I would not say that the uh, the design here and the, the way they put everything together really hurts the players that much from that point of view uh, as far as teaching the game. And then lastly, tactics and strategy. Luck. Is it too lucky? Is it balanced? Uh, are there interesting choices? Things like that. I find the game to be certainly more interesting than the first. Again, mainly because of the cages and mainly because of the powers on the characters are more interesting than the first release. Now you've got characters that do 
more diverse special effects, right? Once per game even, that's fine, but it's still something more unique than before, and I appreciate that. Just from a, you know, uh, engagement point of view, I want to be able to have something cool that I can do that nobody else can do, even if it's just once in the whole game. As far as, you know, how tricky are my choices, um, there's a little bit of cooperation here, right? I mean, there's a few things you have to talk about the, you, you, that the group must come to an agreement about. Like, what monster do we focus on? Do I just hit it to kill it? Do I hit it to net it? Uh, do I, um, do we use this first aid kit to heal you or me? Do, do I, you know, do you need it more? Are you more likely to die? Those sorts of things. And that, that can be engaging. And again, I think that carries the game through 30 or 40 minutes of play. One thing that they did change I want to point out is the health kits in this one heal a character up to its full health value. You know, full, fully healthy again. As opposed to in the first game, a health kit healed you for one victory point. One, one HP, sorry. And that was just ridiculous. Again, that game was it simply did not feel like they caught some things. Uh, again, I'm assuming that was a rule book issue, largely, uh, because some of the choices that that rule book would have made you uh, believe were to be taken at face value were just not were a little too ridiculous, you know. And so overall, I think at the end of the day, this is just a much better release than the original game. Is that saying this is a good game? I think it's okay. It's an okay game. It's, a, it's it can be fun. It can be interesting. It's got a neat setting, great artwork, but. Uh, there's still some of that sloppiness that it drags with it from that original re release. I still want the keyword usage, you know, the labeling of the cards to be a little bit clearer. I still would like some clarification of some of the powers in play here and when they're active, when they're not active. Once I put that monster in the cage, is it neutralized then? There's definitely one character in there that I cannot quite figure out how I'm supposed to deal with it when it shows up. And that's problematic for me, especially for a game that has 54 cards or something along those lines. I would hope that it would not be several, it's not a single card, it's a, it's a few, several cards that are problematic in their wording, in, in the way they're supposed to work. I'm not sure how much blind testing this had to catch those things. That's my main problem with it. I think the gameplay is neat, you know? Cute little card game, co-op. You're dealing with some crazy beasties and so on. Yeah, that's cool. But I still cannot believe we have a few lingering issues here from the first one. Again, much better than Siberia. But still not quite as clean as I would like it to be. So this one still does not get, uh, you know, uh, enough... To make me feel like I can blindly recommend it to anyone who's even remotely into cooperative games. I think if it looks good in the overview to you, if you played the first one, I think is who this is largely for, and you were not real happy with that one, then try this one. Maybe not go out and buy it. You might still not like it. But try this one. See if this one doesn't solve the problems you have with the first one. I think it might, for the most part, just be prepared to still deal with a couple of issues with the text, you know, with the wording. So there you go, that is uh, Outpost, uh, Outpost Amazon in this case. I don't know if they're gonna keep going with this series, I kinda hope they do, and I really hope that the third one is, you know, third time's the charm as they say. I'm hoping the third one is finally perfect as far as issues. The gameplay, not fantastic, but I like it, but it's those little issues that I'm hoping they resolve in the last uh, you know, in the next, rather, version of this game, if there is one. So there you go. Thanks for checking this out with me. I'm Z Garcia, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.